Radiant Team Tech. All right, folks, we're back. Finally, it's been, it's been a bit of a wonky pick. start for the day, but what can you do? Indian internet hashtag Digital India. Yeah. Invisible Wings going up against 3C4 DA. We've got this one here. It's a best of three. Game one getting underway here at Delhi Comic Con for the ESL India Premiership oh, Masters. We already saw the draft progressing midway Dyer before the game got remade. Pick. The Oracle and the Slada are going to come out for 3C4 Needs DA. While IW will get themselves Slada. the mixed assassin alongside that OD. What's Dyer next? Team the ban. They banned out the sniper and 3C4 Radiant DA team had ban. a ban remaining. Um, <sighs> Okay, it's it's banning on the Omni Knight. Dire so team ban. They want a defensive support. Radiant they don't team want to ban. One away to Invisible Wings, which is fair enough considering that they do have a rather defensive playstyle when it comes to taking objectives around the map. Knights or Lifestealer rather being banned out by Invisible Wings. That uh, sees to it that Slada won't be ferrying any parcel across the map. For Ten the seconds days. remaining. IW's done their homework though. They know that 3C4DA likes to run that Five uh, seconds sniper remaining. draw ranger duo. Right. They've chosen to ban out the sniper. Leaving the draw ranger in seems a bit precarious. Reserve Perhaps they're going to get it for themselves though. Oh, my bad. Looks like draw ranger is actually the first ban of this game. Yeah. Yeah, but IW could have picked it up, and uh, this is the next pick. Um, I'm guessing it's going to be an ogre. Yeah, or o ogre. I, I'd like to see a waller. Maybe not an ogre for IW though, because Oracle's already been picked up by 3C4DA. Right. You basically counter the ogre's mid rotations by putting the Oracle there and basically dispelling the ignite fire damage with uh, the fortunes end. Alternatively, though, Nyx what? could be their roaming support, starting in the jungle. They, in that case, I think the warlock fits their build perfectly. Right. No, but I've generally not seen IW being able to pull off these greedy four position supports. Evil Ash, I've, I've not seen him manage to get farm across the map like how No Chance does when he runs a four position Nyx. So I am going to call this an Dire team for the time being. Let's see how the drop progresses. Invisible Wings, they're probably going to pick up a carry maybe for Crowley as the drop progresses. Juggernaut, one of those heroes that uh, he's been uh, forced to play rather in this entire tournament and series. If yeah, I don't know if it's the right time to pick up a Juggernaut. Ten right seconds yet. remaining. Um, but they are a versatile lot. They could always swap up the Odin. If they feel the Odin is going to have a hard time at mid, send him into the safe lane and pick a separate mid for Archmage. By the Dyer way, the Archmage pick. has yet to play his Invoker. And Invoker hasn't been picked up banned just yet. Right. That is his signature hero. It perfectly fits into the IW playstyle. And I do feel like there's room for it here. So, Witch Doctor getting picked up by Invisible. 10 Wings. seconds Juggernaut remaining. Picked up by uh, 3C48. Um, 5 seconds remaining. Looking at the bands, what do you think is a good four here for Crowley? Mm. Sven? Reserve yeah, I time. Mind seeing the Sven here? I mean, yeah, Sven, Sven actually does Sven work Sven well. Sven. Okay. Wow. Well done, well done, Vivek. Take a pick. Radiant take a bow for team that one. pick. Bow. But yeah, Sven with the Warcry, great versus the Slada amp damage. Sven's physical DPS, great versus the Juggernaut. Not so great versus the Oracle, though. Oracle's probably the support that's most equipped or best equipped to deal with this Ven in the, in the sense that they can Ten guide around them. Remaining. The false promise, of course, gives a few extra seconds of life to their core. Five seconds At remaining. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, 3C4DA picked up a last big Huskar or maybe in Ursa here. Reserve time. They could go Huskar alternatively. If they do play Invoker, now's not a bad time to pick him up. Yeah. I mean, Invisible Wings aren't going to contest the Invoker. They don't have space for it on the lineup. Uh, is that a support? Yeah, okay. So we'll be we'll getting Ogre Badger for 3C4DA. We, we, we harped on about how IW might not have room for an Ogre. 3C4DA has it just fine. Right. Good synergy, good uh, tanky supports coming out. Uh, well, one tanky support and one tanky offlaner coming out from their draft. Uh, Juggernaut also not the easiest hero to bring down. They're lacking a Radiant mid. Invoker still in the pool. Might be a viable option here. Um, Radiant team pick. Okay, so Timbersaw is in the pool, and I think if this is a support next, Invisible Wings uh, pick up a Timbersaw for A35. Alternatively, they could look at something like an Axe. Yeah, Axe, Beastmaster, Timbersaw, and Void is still in the pool. Void, Witch Doctor, not bad at all. But Void with the Sven, Five it's a little counterintuitive. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking about what is uh, what are A35's go-to picks here in this entire tournament. Void is one of them. Sand King's been banned out. He plays Axe every now and then. Timbersaw is an additional source of damage and could help out Invisible Wings. For 3C4 DA, meanwhile, I think we're looking for a mid here. Invoker's still in the pool as we Mirana. pointed out. Mirana's a choice. The Dragonite, if they're looking to push. 
Templar Assassin, if they really want to go full armor reduction. Heck, even the Timber Sword mid isn't bad. Yep. Timber Sword versus OD, who do you think comes out? Oh. Oh, okay then. This dire team briefly team. crossed my mind, but I, I like, come on, nobody's gonna pick Lena. Nobody picks Lena anymore. She, I think she was one of the few. There were three heroes that weren't picked at TI, and Lena was one of them. Right. I think if Wings played a couple of more games, they would have ended up picking up the Lena. But uh, yep, it's VC Forty A who uh, bring back a hero that's been relegated to cosplaying pretty much. Remaining. IW, last pick on the board for them. Now they know they're going up against a very early to mid game oriented lineup from 3C4DA. What do they have up their sleeves to deal with this? Well, they've got the late game security with the Swen and the OD to some extent. Huh. Earth Spirit. Ah, it's going to be an A35 Earth Spirit by the looks of it. Actually, Evil no, Ash no, has played it as well, it's so it's a support. Off lane Nyx, yeah. yeah. Alright, not a bad dra draft at all. They've got. Uh, Good early game presence with that Earth Spirit and Witch Doctor. Good mid game presence with the Knicks. And late game, they're looking absolutely beastly with the Sven and the OD. I think the problem with Lena is uh, I mean, what you do as a core is you traditionally get space on the map to farm and you do it by yourself. You don't need a support around you all the time. And if Lena's by herself, it's easy pickings for the Knicks. I think Knicks is going to have a lot of fun this game. Yeah, I definitely agree. That said, though, the Ogre Magi Prepare really isn't the ideal battle. nut that he wants to crack here. I think the Nyx is only going to be happy if he finds the Lina or that uh, Oracle out there. Going after the Ogre is pretty much suicide. Yeah. But for those of you that are just tuning in and joining us at the venue, you've got 3C4DA from Nepal going up against Invisible Wings from India. IW are the defending champions. This is a best of three lower bracket match. It's game one and we are about to get underway. Let's start off with the introduction, shall we, Vic? Absolutely. Um, I'll take on the side of uh, 3C4DA, Oracle being played by ZCXV. On the offlane, we've got Heaven playing the Slada, Y taking the role of the Lina, Madara on the safe lane with the Juggernaut, and Sirio on Esto on the Ogre Magi. Meanwhile, for Invisible Wings, you've got Pasol, the newest edition, playing that Witch Doctor. Uh, Satyricon, that's actually Crowley playing the Sven. Evil Ash is going to be handling his Earth Spirit. You've got Archmage on the OD, which puts Nyx Assassin squarely in the hands of A35 on the offlane. Quick prediction, Vivek, who do you think is coming out on top here in Game 1? I think it's going to be a very closely contested mid game. And um, I feel if IW get their hands on uh, Ages, on, on Roshan, they could win the game. I, I feel they scale better the as the game goes begins. later. Uh, there, there's going to be a point where no, the Juggernaut and the Lena just hit a wall and there's not much they're going to offer. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree with you there. I feel like the, the late game and the ultra late game phase is in favor of Invisible Wings, but I definitely give 3C4DA the advantage when it comes to early and mid game presence. Right. That uh, burst damage from the Lena really cannot be ignored. Um, IW, oh, okay, they're having some problems with the sunlight apparently. There must yeah. be glare on the screen or something. I guess that'll be sorted along the way. Anyway. Archmage, at mid, he's got that courier walking all the way out to him. Uh, it does put down his south. How's the warding looking at mid? A sentry has been dropped by the Lena. Archmage doesn't have an observer on the cliff. Astral Imprisonment to set this up. It's going to be followed up with the rolling boulder. I don't think this is going to transition into a kill, but it will put Y on the back foot for the first few minutes. Denied. Um, this mid matchup, I think the OD should come out on top in terms of CS. And uh, once the OD picks up a pair of infused raindrops, it's not going to be easy for Lina to bring her to bring down the OD. And then also the constant rotations from Evil Ash. So the Oracle has to be on the tip of his toes. He's already carrying a teleport scroll in case he needs to move on to the mid lane and uh, uh, rotate accordingly to keep the Lina alive. All right, so top lane they're going to make a play as uh, Evil Ash comes in from behind. This should be your first blood. They're just staying the hell away from that slaughter, not willing to get crushed just yet. Rolling Boulder connects and Evil Ash will score first blood. Invisible Wings are now on the board. Good stuff coming on from Evil Ash here. Slada being uh, a bit lax in his positioning, pushing out in the lane a bit too much. And there was a Radiant Observer, however, but he didn't see Evil Ash coming in. So the dual lane has now transitioned into a straight up tri lane at bottom. Oracle's coming into the fray as well to try and bring down the Nyx. Look at the amounts of consumables that the Nyx assassin is walking around with. He started with 8 tangos, a salve and the stout shield. So no double mango build coming out. He's just going to rely on his tangos and salves to keep him through this lane. Right. What's curious here is that uh, Sirio Nest on the Ogre, he's uh, invested a lot in trying to shut down the Nyx in uh, the off lane rather than focusing on the OD, and that's why most of the action is going on. Earth Spirit once again rotating to the mid lane. 
I mean, he rewards the sentry, but uh, he's playing around the mid lane while the ogre is playing around uh, A35 on the next fortunes end. Blade Fury. They've got the stun if they want to use it. They do use it, however. A35 has got the spike carapace. There's nothing he can do. He's been brought down. Juggernaut gets the kill. Both offlaners die. Alright, one piece here. 3 c 4 da finding themselves a kill and bringing them right back into this game. Meanwhile, at mid, we're still looking at Evil Ash waiting to make a play. The only way they get this done is if they get the Astral Imprisonment off. It's easier now that they have a Dire Observer Ward placed upon the cliff as well. So Y really has to be careful about how he's playing this. He's already getting out CS quite heavily here. 16 to 6 on the OD versus 10 and 0 on the Lina. And here we go. Well, no Archmage, no. Sorry, no Evil Ash. He's actually gone stacking. Uh, Evil Ash has been absolutely effective as the roaming support, ganking a lane, putting pressure on the mid lane, stacking every now and then. And uh, good stuff coming out from him. But uh, I, I, do you think Ogre's doing the right thing here? Playing around the bot lane instead of helping out Lina in the mid lane. No, I absolutely disagree with this. They're not scoring a single kill on A35 just yet. They're unable to bring him down through all of his HP and armor. Um, his efforts would be better spent at mid lane, I think, slowing down the OD's growth. Right. And there is actually kill potential if uh, the Ogre teams up with Lina, possibly once Lina hits it. Was not your I mean, kill potential is a little hard, but... I definitely think they'll be able to zone him out. Zone him out. Oh, Evil Ash just barely misses on yep. that rolling boulder. If that connected, that might have been another kill. In Back at top though, Heavens actually had two deaths to his name. Sven did bring him down the second time around. Right. As uh, Crowley should now be on top of the net worth board with 2000 net worth at attributed to his name. He has picked up the Helm of Iron Will, so we're looking at an early Helm of the Dominator into uh, possibly a Blink Tagger. Mm -hmm. OD getting both the runes uh, without any contest, sorry, Rio, top rune without any contest, while Lina gets the bot rune, it's a region, some much needed relief for her. So, see you on Esto, I mean, this is unusual, I do not see an ogre investing so heavily in shutting down the offlane, usually the whole point of an ogre is, because his base region is so high and his HP is so high, he's usually trading with the hero, the enemy mid laner. And just trading with him keeps him busy and occupied, keeps his HP low, helps out your mid laner. Instead, he's quite invested in trying to shut down A35. While well, they're not really shutting him down, they did kill him once, but elsewhere Slada has died twice. So. Yeah, it's not enough at this point. Nyx is getting closer and closer to level 6. He's managed to creep, keep the creep equilibrium closer to his tier 1 tower, so he's not too worried about them diving fast. Um, he does, I mean, one death isn't so bad considering that he's got himself the boots online already. I, I feel like 3C4 D are making a mistake here. Yeah, anyways, they have a game plan. Mid, that game again, you've got Lina getting jumped upon. The rolling boulder connects. They do have another Astral Imprisonment. Radiant's it's a level 3 Imprisonment. That should attack. be the death of the Lina. One more auto attack is needed. It doesn't seal the deal. The Fairy Fire helps her see through it. Meanwhile, you've got the Fortunes End connecting onto two. Lina with the Dragon Slave from behind. Archmage even popping his stick charges. Now he's making a run for it with the Fairy Fire popped as well. He will survive. But two supports have now been rotated into as a middle lane for 3C4DA, and that means that the Nyx Assassin can start to bully Maldara a little bit. Yeah, it's some alone time for the supports in the mid lane. Maybe one of them could use this as an opportunity to stack something in the jungle. We're nearly hitting the 50 second mark on our clock. But uh, instead, Oracle's just going to walk back uh, to his Juggernaut. Nyx gets some much needed alone time. Actually, not that badly needed. He's almost hitting level 6 soon enough. He's almost level 5. He'll be sick shortly, I hope. Yeah, this is it's looking very troublesome for 3C4 DA. This calm mid game is not in their best interest. Right. We've spoken about how they're, how they're the team that could have the explosive early game opening and mid game transition. But uh, at the moment, it looks like IW has stemmed the bleeding. Absolutely. Yeah. And uh, the thing is, Lena's not going to rotate until she gets uh, an item of value or so, maybe a use which is in the build every time Lena's been played mid lane. Dragon Slave, Light Strike Array. You have that Astral Imprisonment set up. Evil Ash smacks that boulder smash, does get the stun, but they're not committing too deep for fear of TPs coming in and sealing the deal there. This is IW just applying consistent pressure, but now they're actually going in for the jugular. Maybe they are, maybe they aren't. There's the rolling boulder, misses again. Why? Doesn't connect with the Light Strike Array, and it looks like Archmage will just have to back away and continue farming now. Okay, in terms of CS, Madara is keeping pace, if not doing slightly better than Crowley on the Sven. But uh, what's been rather decisive here is that Crowley has one kill and one assist to his name. In the mid lane, it's uh, been a whitewash of sorts. OD, of course, pulling ahead. 
putting a lot of pressure on the Lina constantly. 26 CS on the Lina while the OD is sitting at a comfortable 41. I'm going to drop the levels. Is anybody badly on the level? Um, the Earth Spirits keeping keeping up with the Yoga. Yeah, but, but the Witch Doctors pulled ahead a fair bit. You, you gotta worry about this because that was an Ogre that was leeching EXP from the core. But it made Dild rotate. They will get the Fortunes end to start this off an Archmage. He has an imprisonment, but he's been stunned before he can get it off. Another stun comes out. This time he stuns Shut up the Lina instead. Boulder Smash kicks in, gets the stun off on two, and now Lina's in trouble as well. The Rolling Boulder is there. It will connect. Lina throws down a Dragon Save. One more hit will do the trick, and Y will drop. Meanwhile, you've also got an Ogre Magi who's been put into another dimension and will return with just a call in the middle lane. Yeah, good stuff coming out from IW. Pasol threw the stun on the Ogre, didn't bother chasing down the Lina. Evil Ash did the rash, brought down the Lina, and with the Malvik, they picked down that Ogre, got that kill. Radiance good Middle rotation. Paying off for IW. Surprising, despite uh, 3C having the Dyer's better early to mid game, as we call this. Yeah, the key decision there was uh, Archmage choosing to use the Astral Imprisonment on the Lina instead of himself. But meanwhile, Oracle, did he just go AFK? I've seen everything. Yeah, a35 every 50 seconds whenever his vendetta is on cooldown he's probably going to be scoring a kill and that's why things are going to start getting worrisome for 3c48 they'll have to start five manning or dropping sentries on all lanes at all times and uh, if, if it comes to a battle of five man i think iw will pull, pull ahead because they've done a better job in terms of levels and uh, farm yep, they have taken a 2000 net worth lead in their favor they've also got about the same amount of exp in their favor uh, the top tier 1 tower is taking significant amounts of damage and might be the next focus of IW's engagement. Uh, Sadarakon, that is Crowley, he's up to 1200 gold. It remains to be seen if he's going to go for the Echo Saber or for the Blink Dagger. What's really worrisome is that these Ancients are not being contested at all. Crowley's just had a ball of a time stacking it up with this range creep. And there's really no way for 3C to contest it after the Ancients have been stacked. Right. Yeah, well, uh, Crowley... Okay, top lane, I did hear the Coconuts, Paralyzing Cast, did connect Maldict as well, but Heaven did manage to use the Crush. He's sprinting away for the time being, he's safe. A3-5 did come into Vendetta, under however. Attack. Yeah, I think it's fine though. Even though they don't get the kill, they're gonna get the tier 1 tower on this top lane. And that Radiance means that the Slana is gonna have to play a lot more cautiously going forward. Radiance right, top what's tower is under attack. Slana sitting at 1.2k gold, that's not bad, he can get a naked blink at Radiance a reasonably decent time. He's got no iron talent to help him out in the jungle. But A3-5, he doesn't need much to get active across the map. Just that Vendetta itself is such a threat, imposing so much control all around the map. Mid lane, why not having a fun time? Just sitting with a Null and a Magic Wand for the time being. Yeah, but Windless has been added to that mix, but Evil Ash now gonna get stunned up, a Fortune's End is there, he boulder smashes, rather he kicks away Sirio Onesto, and then gets up on the high ground and TP's out. Yep, 10 minutes in, not a Laguna being committed just yet from the Lina. She has that regen rune, so maybe now's the time to... Well, they actually did pop a smoke earlier. That smoke was intending to get... Uh, they were intending to use the bottom rune as bait, but that didn't quite work out for them. IW is absolutely content at just farming like this. They know that they've got to just buy their time till the Sven can go clean up on the stacks. He's got himself 2.3k gold in the bank now, so we'll wait and see if he goes for the blink after all, or if he will uh, switch gears and go for the Echo Saber instead. I think the Echo Saber could work for him at this point. They've now blocked out this, this uh, camp with the Radiant Observer Ward, so they are going to find out. IW is uh, going to try and stack this and realize that it's not stacking. Right. Um, mid lane, Ogre hanging around, not much he can do really, very quickly, what's the graph telling us, it's a 4000 plus lead in favour of IW for the time being, EXP tells a similar story, and uh, well, everything is going according to plan for IW, if not slightly better because A35 is caught up Madara, the Vendetta did hit but Madara was quick enough to Blade Fury, gets out of there, TV rotations, are coming in. It's Sirio Ernesto on the Ogre. Not much he can do, really. Yeah, I'm actually surprised he chose to run there. I think he could have turned around and fought. Had the, he had the Omni Slash at the ready, and there was no way for the next assassin to get out of there. Right. Do you think uh, 3 c should contest the stack? Because Crowley is actually falling low. They do have some vision. They know what's going on. Ogre, I mean, sorry, the Lina, along with the Oracle, are moving in that direction, under cover of smoke. Oh, I think Crowley's dead. Just one straight Laguna Blade will do it. They, yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well done. 3CY getting himself a much-needed kill on the Sven. 
Radiance yep. Middle Tower is but under attack. Meanwhile, at Saber completed. Meanwhile, that top lane, bait and switch Dora, it's gonna be the slaughter that gets dropped down. Earth Spirit will claim the kill, even committing the magnetize for it. An eye for an eye is this IW, but they're still taking some Dyer's significant damage on their own tier one at bottom now. A yeah, good stuff coming out uh, from both teams here. Uh, 3C breaking down the Sven, IW knowing that a lot Dyer's of 3C did come into fortified. the Dire Ancients and they immediately bring Radiant down the Slada in the offense, attack. halting the progress of his blink Dyer's because bottom not tower sure what, what amount of gold he was sitting on, but he's now sitting on 1.9k Dyer's gold. Bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, not bad at all. I mean, he did have a very slow start. Three deaths to his name, 1.9k gold, 12 minutes in. We're looking at about a... I would say 15 minute blink tagger if he gets some farm time on this top lane. Right. Which isn't bad at all and then 3C can start fighting. What's the Lena got? Because uh, it's, she needs one item that has an impact in fights and right now she's building up to her Yules. Yeah, I think Dyer's the Yules is the attack. ideal choice here. Maybe an Ethelens into Yules would have helped out but since she has managed to find some space now, Yules isn't looking too shabby at all. Uh, the Sven's farm did get slowed down. He chose to go for the Echo Saber, so he's still not going to be able to jump into these fights. At least not until he gets that Blink Tagger. Again, the problem for IW's drop seems to be the lack of initiation. Whereas for 3C, 4DA, I can see them jumping in with a Blink and a Crush to start things off. For IW, it's going to have to be a Nyx Top with his own lane, Blink. They've used the Rolling Boulder. They've used the Silence as well, but not Radiant's enough to bring down the Slada. The Vendetta Impale, all of that was committed, but Heaven stays alive. Force stuff finished up on the OD. So that could be a pseudo initiation tool that they use. Force into the astral imprisonment, perhaps. Yep. There's going to be this timing window in another three minutes when Slara has his blink, when Lena has a Yules, and uh, when Sven gets a blink of his own. And then the map is just going to pretty much explode uh, with action all around. And uh, it's going to be yeah, rather decisive catch. who executes team fights better at that time. Yeah, middle lane looks like there's going to be a bit of pickle here. There is the astral imprisonment coming out upon the witch doctor. He will end up dropping Lena with the uh, <laughs> dragon, slave. dragon slave, of course. Securing the, the kill, but Evil Ash rolls in aggressively. Did connect with the kick and the back of the silence. This is huge. A sanity eclipse committed. A defensive astral keeps Evil Ash alive, but elsewhere, Arc Mage, he's got three kills. He's brought down the ogre, the juggernaut, Radiant's and the slada. They're not done. They want more, but look at that beautiful initiation coming out from Evil Ash. Absolutely. Well Rolling done, boulder, man. three man Radiant's kick. Middle tower a beautiful three man fallen. geomagnetic grip, grip, followed up by that. Impale from A35. Yep, that was picture perfect coming out from Invisible Wings. They managed to get themselves a much needed uh, triple kill in the middle lane. It was Archmage's OD that Dyer's gets the money for it. So that really puts uh, 3C4 day on the back foot now. They were the team that was supposed to have the better early game, but it looks like they're getting completely That's washed out here. I mean, who expects an Earth Spirit to initiate like that? They're, that's what a Tidehunter does with a Blink Dagger practically. So good stuff coming out from Evil Ash. Even I wasn't expecting it. I saw it, but I was like, is he going to die? What is he thinking? Anyways. Uh, good stuff coming out from Evil Ash. We have a pause, so I'm going to take this chance to bring down the graphs for you folks. The graph slowly and slowly tilting in favor of IW. It's a 5,000 plus network lead in favor of IW. EXP tells the same story to us. But uh, I guess 3C are probably... Okay, they've got the blink, they've got the use. Um, do they pop a smoke now? Is that the plan for them? I think so. I, I don't think waiting is in their best interest anymore. They've got to go looking for pickoffs. They've got to use the absurd amount of burst damage that they have in their ranks. That blink dagger is their ticket to go. It really should be an invitation to go up and try and take fights. This is also a lineup that could take Roshan quite easily. So if they do manage Dyer's to find a successful team fight, it's attack. very easy for them to transition in, into a very important objective. Right. I also think it's not bad just picking up an early gem. Or at least carrying, uh, is the ogre holding on to dash? No, they're holding on to sentries, which is fine. But if this smoke Radiance dispels, bottom tower is under attack. if I might be able to get out of them. They're still waiting though. Are, do they even have the smoke anymore? I think their smokes are on cooldown. Okay. Yep, smokes of deceit on cooldown on the side of 3 c 4 da so they're giving up the bot tower, they're choosing not to fight, they're just giving up the safe lane tower. Radiance bottom Maybe tower is under attack. They can trade and try and pressure the top tower, but they're not doing that either. Radiance structures are fortified. Okay, now they're trying to make a trade happen. Well, pushing the top lane is the only real objective that they can accomplish at this point. Bottom lane. Radiance There's also a scan used by the radiant to check this general bush area over here, but uh, nothing to be found. 
Evil Ash and Cole will continue to battle down this middle lane, uh, sorry, this bottom lane, and might even be able to get some cheap Radiant's damage done on the tier two. Is under attack. Yeah, what's worrisome here is that Dyer's DC might get the top tower, attack. but IW couldn't quite easily take down uh, the tower in the bot lane. And uh, how do 3C respond? Do they try and fight Radiant and join the fight? Basically, IW is forcing them to fight man and fight now. That IW is, says, like, I'm going to continue pushing. You can fight us if you like or not. That's exactly what you got to do, right? Once you've got the Blink and the Echo Saber on the Sven, once you've got your early core items, right? a full Hurricane Pike, in fact, finished up on that OD. Radiance There's nothing stopping IW from fallen. walking in and taking a five-man fight. In fact, we spoke about how 3C4DA can take down Roshan, so can IW with the God Strength and the Warcry. Yep. Another 1200 gold on the OD. I'm assuming it's going to be a blink dagger. Uh, that's going to be his next item of choice. Meanwhile, in the jungle, looks like a fight's about to break out. A35 under cover of invisibility. Half the smokes have been broken. There's the crush coming out. It's only on the Sven. IW. It looks like they want to turn this around, but the sentry ward is watching them. LSA will connect. He does have the spike carapace popped in time, so he does manage to turn back some of that damage. And why can't quite burst him down? Once again, 3C not fighting despite having the stronger mid game lineup in theory they're choosing not to take the fight which is fine but uh iw say that's okay with us as well we just move on take roshan take another objective and maybe attempt high ground there's no god strength being used though it's almost as if iw is waiting for uh cc 4 to come and fight them and then they're gonna pop the god strength and take it nope scratch that they will commit to roshan they now have vision of what uh, 3c 4 are up to so they will not hesitate to bring it down pick up I yeah. think, yeah, it is going to be the OD that holds on to the Aegis here. No point in giving it to the Sven. Okay. Roshan has fallen to the dark. What do you, what do you ideally keep in mind uh, when you decide who picks up the Aegis? Who's going to bring the most to the fight after the he or she dies? I, I think it really depends on what your objective is at that moment. So, if... I think the only scenario where you'd give it to the Sven over the OD is... Well, if, if the OD is out of slots, or if uh, the Sven doesn't have a buyback available. Right. And uh, if IW choose to push, it's mostly Archmage who's going to be frontlining with the OD. That's why you want the Aegis on him. Yep. So he can hopefully die That, once. and when you pop the God Strength and die with the Aegis, you don't respawn with it, so... Right. So he's not going to bring much to fight yeah, His that. second life isn't going to be as useful as the OD's second life would. Mm-hmm. On the other side, you've got Juggernaut building towards an early Manta style. I say early, but we're already at the 20 minute Ooh, they mark. caught A35 down. Amplify quickly brought him down. It's Oracle who gets the kill. The the purifying flames. I'm not sure. Okay, there was a Radiant Sentry there. Yeah, this is really good for 3C4 DA. Every time they can find a pickoff, uh, it, it basically delays IW's push with that Aegis. If they can buy enough time for uh, their Juggernaut to get his next crucial items online, maybe the Lina even finishing up that Aghanim Scepter, they might have a real shot at making a comeback or holding their high ground. They have shown us before that high ground defense is one of their strengths, one of their core strengths. This is where they'll have to flex those muscles the most. Yeah, uh, yesterday versus Orem 4, they held high ground time and time again, pretty much doing two team fights despite having ages, but Crowley is not going to have any of that. Moves on to Madara, the stun did connect Madara, trying to Blade Fury out of there, trying to juke his very best of all promise, keeps him alive. Crush onto OD. Where's the stun? There it is, but it didn't connect. Amplify damage onto the OD. He's turning around. Stun comes out from the ogre. Lina uses self, avoids the stun from the sweat. Two man crush, only slash, two man stun from the Lina. There's a Laguna as well that brought down the sweat. OD's ages has been taken out. Marara and company grouping out around him. He uses the Hurricane Pike, Sanity's Eclipse. There's a lot of panic here. Self Astral keeps him alive for the time being. There's the paralyzing class. They move on to the with Doctor. They bring him down. They're not done. They see Archmage. They bring him down as well. A dominating streak goes towards the ogre. That was the team fight that 3C needed. Beautifully done by 3C4 DA. Some great chain stunning coming out between the Slara and the Lina. The burst damage bringing down the Sven. Overextension from IW does not go unpunished. And 3C4 DA, they've stuck in the knife and twisted it where it hurts. Small uh, decision making error coming out here from IW. I'm not sure what they were thinking. Trying to take a fight without Evil Ash in the vicinity because he's bringing so much to team fights. He's He's got the best for crowd control. I don't, I don't think they wanted to take a fight, man. They jumped in. They wanted to get the pick off on the juggernaut, but he was just a tad bit too tanky for them to finish up. Madara backed away, came back in for another bout with the Omni Slash. Really huge props to the Oracle there. 
Sven was thinking of going back in once his blink dagger cooled down, but Oracle noticed this, threw down the fortunes end, ensuring that the Sven couldn't come back in in time. That really was the only, I think the primary reason why 3C4DA managed to take a successful team fight. Also there. those crushes coming out from Slara followed up with the light strike array from Luna. Yeah, there Neither. were a lot of tiny things that turned yeah. things around. Along with that Jules as well, which dodged the storm hammer from the Sven. I think the thing, the thing about 3C4DA is they always it, it brings out the best in them when the enemy has an Aegis. Every time somebody picks up an Aegis, 3C4D are like, wait, we're not going to let you do anything with that. They've done this yesterday versus Oram Pope. At least the good five times. They're doing it today versus Invisible Wings. Yep. I, we have I a little bit is... of lag coming out, unfortunately. But yeah. I think I think we should settle shortly. But yeah, it, it, what you're saying is 100% correct, man. I think 3C4DA... Because of the way they play, because of this whole comeback style of Dora, it makes them such an entertaining team to watch. Oh yeah. And if they're pulling off a comeback against the reigning champions of Indian Dora, they're no pushovers, man. They have a Absolutely. real shot of winning this. I am completely with you on this. These aren't any fluky comebacks by luck. They're very calculated fights. And uh, what was beautiful was when Madara in the bot lane was caught out here, somewhere around here on the map, there were immediate TP rotations coming up from the rest of his team in the mid lane. Marara walked past the trees, moved towards his team. A timely false promise kept him alive and 3C48 just turned things from there. Yep. Let's have a look at the graphs after that one. It's gone back upwards now. It's 6,000 still in favor of IW. They've also got the EXP lead going their way, but that last fight should have sent warning bells ringing all over their camp. It's not like 3C4DA has some very long cooldowns either. They can fight often. They can continue to fight if IW tries to push the envelope of what their lineup can do. Absolutely, and uh, Smoke of Deceit is available to them. They can use it if they want to take a fight. But uh, having cast uh, two of 3 C4DA's games yesterday, they do play rather conservatively, to say the least. And uh, they're just going to hold on to that Smoke for the time being. But they've got enough sentries and dust to work with. Evil Ash with an Invis rune scouting them out. He did, I think he did walk into the periphery of that sentry world, so he's got to be careful. Look at the warning coming out from 3C4DA, sparing no expense to shut down that Nyx assassin. They're trying to lay a trap here with three sentries covering almost every square inch of this radiant side of the map. What yeah. have we here? I think an investment in the gem Radiance is a much needed investment here from attack. IW. From 3C4DA or IW? IW actually. Okay. Here we go, Yules again, another sentry ward will find an invisible evil ash. That Laguna Blade spent there without any hesitation. As Oracle will get the kill there. One more pick off, one more minor feather in 3C4DA's cap. Mm -hmm. And uh, Lina has got that Aghanim Scepter now, so the Laguna is no more magical damage, it's all pure damage coming out, and that's quite handy versus the Sven who might even go on to build something like a BKB as the game progresses. Speaking of which, he's already got that BKB. Uh, one more new added tool when IW decides to take a team fight next, if they do. Yeah, but I still don't know if this is enough because it's the Oracle that's going to be a real cause for concern for him. Right. Yeah, the Fates Edict is no longer going to work on him. It's not going to be able to start disarm him, but uh, the False Promise will help to keep his allies alive and will help them to kite around the Sven. So bring down the Oracle first, maybe? I that's, don't know. that's... It's a plan. tall order, though, because Oracle's probably going to be standing on the back lines. Yeah, he's also got a Glimmer Cape to work with, so you're not expecting uh, Crowley to... Keep getting detection on him. Speaking of Crowley, he's, he's attempting double damage. Double damage! Picks it up, goes to farm. So, IW are taking some time to rethink their strategy here. They've taken a good amount of uh, uh, map control here, but uh, that Aegis unfortunately didn't work for them. So, they're going to play it safe, I presume. Wait for the next uh, Aegis and uh, get the next Aegis and then move on to take an objective. I say that, but they group up at the mid lane, pop a smoke. Eight, a35 leading the charge with Vendetta. Now he's got that blink dagger, so a big stun is not uh, out of the question anymore. Madara, he could be in trouble here. Are they actually going to commit on him? They're going in from behind. Sentry walls all over the place. They're rolling border all the way in. They will miss the stun on Madara, but they're going for the ogre. That is the tankiest possible choice. Sven jumps forward, gets the clean, gets the kill off on the Oracle. And now it's two down for invisible for uh, 3C4DA. Kind of surprised they didn't commit there. 3C4DA. Yeah. I think the plan was attack. let the ogre die and maybe the oracle could fall from his the ogre and just leave him to die. Uh, it's, it's all up to Slada really. Heaven My felt that thanks. he didn't have a good opportunity to initiate. Radiance and if 3C4DA did take that fight, there was a Shana good chance they it. might Shana have to Shana buy back to defend uh, the tier trees and the racks. So I think it's fine that they didn't take that fight over them. 
Anyways, IW, they popped the smoke, they got two kills and uh, they're going to retreat for the time being. I say retreat, but heavens, he's caught Crowley here with the crush, with the amplified damage. The Yules has come out from the Lina, stun will follow through, but he will ash with a beautiful geomagnetic grip, holds them in place, silences them, the paralyzing cast bounces between the Slada and the Juggernaut kick being committed as well. IW, retreat for the time being. Crowley commits a 10 second BKB to his escape, but IW is safe for the time being. Yep, IW dodging another bullet. Unfortunate that 3C48 could not find anything after that one. They're gonna move in and try and get a crush off on the Witch Doctor, but now the cast will bounce around. They will bring down the Juggernaut Illusions. This tier 1 tower had made a, ve a tower of much strategic importance right now. IW will not let it go that easy. They've got all their cooldowns except for the BKB on this man. I think they're ready to fight this. They're getting in position. Here we go, the crush, the Sven, Godstand subs, jumps in, gets the hits up, he'll bring down the Oracle and then the Sanity's Eclipse will clean up on the Slara. Witch Doctor chanting up the Death Ward, Madara is down, a triple kill for the Sven as the Cleave will finish up on the Juggernaut and the Ogre Magi, making it a five-man team wipe at no cost for Invisible Wings. Once again, it's, uh, the supports on the side of IW who really shined in that fight. Uh, pass hole with a beautiful death ward. They're doing most of the damage, but uh, Crowley comes in with the Echo Saber hit and finishes up Radiance the kill. Middle Tower Evil Ash once attack. again, a beautiful rolling boulder. Um, a two man geomagnetic grip and IW, they're knocking on the tier 3. Radiance Not a uh, single buyback on the side of 3C48. This is really troublesome for them. Attack. They're probably going to lose the tier 3 and the range barracks. I don't know if they can go for the melee barracks in just 10 15 seconds. Without the god strength, especially. But yeah, Radiant's that's what they'll do. They'll focus the range barracks fallen. first. Radiance middle barracks are under yeah, attack. Bot is pushing in as well. Radiance and, uh, middle IW, barracks they're going to play safe. Fallen. They're not taking any risks. Discipline Dota coming out from them, despite them not playing together for a good while. And uh, 3C48. What what went wrong in that fight? Was it just Evil Ash and Pasol? I'm not entirely sure, man. I think it was... So they didn't respect the Sven coming in without his BKB. He jumped in a little late into that fight and... It's always the Oracle. Sven will not let the Oracle go. If he sees the Oracle on the battlefield, he's going to jump in without hesitation. Right. I feel like Oracle's going to stand miles behind right now and come in only when absolutely I'll needed. It doesn't help that he doesn't have an Ethel Lens. They'll find a pick off here. Pastor probably going to go down. No, the defensive imprisonment again. The Sven jumps in. This time it's the Lina that's been blown apart. Slaughter is going down next. Juggernaut drops behind while Sven keeps chasing on the Sirio Nesto. One more hit will do it. He's going to try and juke, but this is only delaying the inevitable because Evil Ash will secure a double kill with that mana burn. Again, 4 down for 3 c 4 da IW lose nothing. Even the Witch Doctor stays alive on the back of that imprisonment. Yeah. Archmage uh, being absolutely judicious and efficient with those astral imprisonments. He's also holding on to a sheep stick. Uh, one more tool for 3 c 4 da to watch out for. Also, uh, the Lina. She, she's not getting any time to cast any spells. They see Radiance her, they burst her down. Crowley attack. jumped on her with a storm hammer and uh, a couple of hits with the Echo Saber brought down the Lina quickly before anyone could react. Yeah. Oracle had to use Radiance the False Promise on himself and run away from attack. that fight. It's Radiance a sad state of affairs when he has to fall. False Promise himself and make a run for it. He can't yeah. really save any of the cores that need that False Promise so much. But uh, IW, they finish what they started at the middle lane. They will take down the melee barracks as well. 3C4DA are now playing with one lane of racks behind. And it's not like they have a battle fury on this juggernaut either. He chose to go for the diffuser blade immediately after that mantis tail. Right, but this is when 3C48 peak. When the enemy gets it, that's Radiant's when the lineup comes together and everything it's seems up. to work for them. So IW are doing just that. Can 3C48 pull up one of the miraculous defenses once more? I really don't know if they have enough this time around. That's a full AC finished up on the Sven in addition to that BKB. He's got armor, he's got mobility, he's got magic community and he's hitting like an absolute train right now in the faces. Hex finished up on the OD as well. So he chose not to go for the BKB. It's, it's, I've got to say it's a ballsy move but it's one that could pay massive dividends if they start the fight in their terms. What is H35 building with a soul push though? I'm assuming that's a bloodstone or is it an octarine? I don't know. I'd have assumed he'd go for the Aghanim Scepter this game. Okay, look at this. A35 blinking into the enemy base. Uh, gonna have his blink off cooldown shortly. Positioning himself for this team fight. If this works, it's gonna pay off so huge. He's gonna get a massive stun off to start the fight. But it is gonna be Satarikon that walks in. He's just gone straight in. Oracle, he sees him. He blows him up. 
No Oracle for this fight, no Onomaj either, and soon it's going to be the Juggernaut that goes down. He doesn't get the Omni Slash off either. Another wipe inside the base, in fact, inside the fountain as IW. They're feeling hella confident about game one here. The GG well played comes out, Madara will tap out, and Invisible Wings will take game one in this best of three series. Yeah, convincing stuff coming out from Invisible Wings. They had a couple of hiccups earlier on in the game. They lost a couple of team fights. Uh, but they waited, they got their items, they grouped up and uh, they just ended the game in uh, a classic clinical manner. Yes, I think uh, 3C48 